what's going on guys in today's video we are going to create this simple motion graphics animation inside hits film express um, so uh, let's get started or we'll open up hit film express and the first thing that i'll do is create a new composite shot um, for the duration let's go with two seconds 30 fps and uh, click on ok let's create a new plane layer and uh, i'm gonna call this square because that is the shape that we'll be creating uh, for the width i'm going to go with 200 and height to 200 as well and you can just give it any color that you like click on ok and here we have our first shape let's create a pentagon shape so for that we we'll just duplicate this layer and we can just rename this to pentagon and let's um, search for an effect called polar warp and apply it on this layer and this will convert this square shape into a circle shape so if we decrease the radius uh, uh, actually you won't see anything because we need to turn this bottom layer off so if you turn that off you can see that our pentagon layer is now turned into a circle shape and once you do that then the next effect that will apply is the bulge effect so I tried applying the bulge effect directly on this pentagon layer and uh, I tried to go into the settings of the bulge effect and change the shape to pentagon but it didn't work out as I expected it to work out so that's why we need to apply the polar warp first and then the bulge effect so let's change the shape to any shape that you want I'm gonna select pentagon and we can just now play around with the bulge and the radius so let's just increase that and once you do that we'll also increase the plateau value to 99 percent and uh, let's see what we have here so if we decrease the size or decrease the radius uh, you're going to notice that we still have the polar warp effect behind the pentagon shape so uh, in order to fix that we just have to just simply increase the size but as you can see it's going to clip the edges of the shape um, so in order to fix that we can just right click on the layer go to properties and uh, we'll just change the width and the height to 300 by 300 and now we can just dial the radius back to 145 and now we have the shape as we want it to be right so um, as you can see it's inverted depending on shape so we need to just um, change the rotation so on the bulge you have the shape expand that and you have the rotation over here so just um, spin it and uh, I'm gonna set this to around 35 so it's gonna look something like that and after that uh, we need to make sure that both our pentagon shape and the square shape is of the same size or the same scale so uh, let's just do that so i'm going to transform and decrease the opacity of this layer we turn on the square shape as well and decrease its opacity as well and once you do that then you're going to see through the uh, the square shape as you can see it's um big so i can just scale it down and the square shape we can just scale that down and uh, going to put it somewhere out there if you zoom in i don't think that this is um, rotated properly you can still see that it's a bit elevated to the right side so let's just go back to the pentagon layer and maybe rotate this by uh by one more degree so let's just set that to 36 and i think that looks fine all right so once you do that then we can set this back to scale fit i'm not using my mouse um, using the trackpad so I just have hard time uh, you know scrolling around and panning and zooming uh, but anyways I'm gonna set the opacity back to 100 on both these layers okay and um, I think that the size of these two shapes is too big so I can just quickly create a new point layer I'm gonna pair in these two layers to that point layer and now I can just simply scale the scale the point layer down and we'll scale both these layers the pentagon and the square layer so i'll just set this to maybe around um, let's do 
64. Uh, we can now delete the point layer. Now let's go to the 16th frame in your timeline. So you can just type in 16 in the time code right over here. Uh, and I'm going to slice these two layers, both these layers. And let's just delete the extra bit. Delete it. Delete it like that. And uh, want the pentagon layer to come after the square. So let's just do that. There we have it. Now let's create a simple animation. So I want to create a simple rotation animation on this. So let's go to square under transform, create a rotation keyframe. Let's move to the end of this clip and set the rotation to 90. Now we can just copy these keyframes, the rotation keyframes, and paste it on the pentagon layer. Control V to paste it. So uh, you'll have something like this. I can also set your endpoint uh, to this playhead, to this keyframe, and then we can just loop this animation by clicking on this loop playback icon. All right, so uh, one more thing that you want to do is just select these two keyframes, the rotation keyframes on the pentagon layer, and just move it forward by one frame. We'll see why we are doing that in a moment. Um, and just make sure that before the first frame, you have this uh, some area to work with. So you can see uh, we have one frame uh, before this keyframe. And we need to do the same thing over here as well. We need uh, a frame before, uh, I mean, after this keyframe so that we can just, we have some extra space to work with. All right, so once you do that, then you just have to select these two layers, hit Control M on your keyboard and create a composite shot. I'm going to call this Bounce Animation. And let's go back to your main comp. Now, uh, let's start animating it. So let's go to Transform. And the first thing that we want to do is just make sure that the anchor point is at the bottom edge of the shape. So let's just change the anchor point value and just bring it right at the bottom of this shape so i think uh, negative 77 looks fine so i'm going to copy this value and paste it in the position value I hit enter now it's going to bring your shape back in the center and once you do that then we can just simply create a position keyframe and just bring the position down to somewhere around let's say negative 300 300 and let's move eight frames forward you can uh, check the time right over here it's eight seconds eight frames i'm sorry and we need to move the position to the top so let's just move it to somewhere around here so let's say 250 let's do a round number and now let's move to eight frames forward again so now we are at the 16th frame we're going to bring it back so we can just copy the first keyframe and paste it so control c and control v right so we will have this simple animation now if you move one frame forward you can see that we don't have any rotation going on um, so what we'll do is just create the similar keyframe so let's just copy and paste the third keyframe so now we have these two similar keyframes and now from this point we're going to move 10 frames uh, we need to move eight frames forward and change the position back to 250 which is at the top move eight frames forward i'm going to set this to negative 300 and um, that should be it so if we play this animation this is what we'll have now uh this is not what we are looking for so now we just have to select uh, these two keyframes that are in the middle and connote keyframes to manual bezier and let's go to value graph or the shift key and just um, drag these handles like that and your graph will look something like this so now if you play this uh, we will have this animation so it's uh, looking much better what we had earlier right so uh it's looking good but it's not looking great so in order to sell this effect what we can do is we can add some squashing and stretching in our animation 
so um, let's create a scale keyframe make sure you unlink the scale and that the very first frame I want the scale to be at 150 and this one should be at 50 and we'll move a couple of frames forward and this time I'm going to reverse this so I'm going to set this one to 50 and the this one to 150 now this right here is your squashed state of your animation and this keyframe will represent the stretched state of your animation now let's go to this keyframe and here I want the scale to be at 100 and 100 now let's move to the next keyframe and just before this keyframe we are going to change the value so I can basically just copy the stretched keyframe Control C and Control V and then let's move to the next keyframe which is right over here this one right here and we need to uh, copy and paste the squashed keyframe right over here so it's the very first keyframe let's copy and paste it and let's move forward right over here and uh, here I want it to be at 100 and 100 and let's move to the last keyframe uh, and just before this keyframe let's move one frame forward and we want this to be in a stretched position so I'll just copy it's gonna help you in looping your animation so now we will just select all these scale keyframes convert the keyframes to manual bezier going to value graph and then you all you have to do is just the the keyframes in the middle the handles that are in the center or in the middle you just have to just stretch them like that all right so now if you play this animation it's gonna look something like this so you can see it's looking much better now to change the colors we can apply the fill color effect on this and we can just keyframe the color let's make sure you create a keyframe for color and we need to create this on the very first frame set the blend amount 100 and just click on this color box and you can just pick any color from the screen let's go with this one and let's move forward where it's squashed right at this point i'm going to change the color to this one or maybe let's use this one okay so now we're going to select these keyframes and convert keyframes to constant keyframes now if you play this this is what we'll end up with. Now we can finally enable the motion blur on this if you want. And it's gonna look much better with motion blur. So that's it. That's how you can create this simple bouncing animation inside Hit Film Express. I hope this tutorial was helpful. If it was, don't forget to leave a like and also you make sure that you subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one.